Welcome to this video tech talk on making a video tech talk. Uh, I had some questions about how I'd put it together, so I just explained the process I went through. I basically prepared for a regular tech talk, hit screen record on this, and then had this software to switch between a couple of things. Um, so most of it is the same as you'd do for a regular tech talk. There's just this extra step of doing the recording. So I'm going to go over the software I used to do the recording to re-encode the video and then upload it to uh, Confluence in the end. Uh, so this start off by showing you around the software I've got. So if I switch now into this OBS software, you should be able to see um, the software itself around the outside. This is OBS, Open Broadcaster Software Studio or something. Um, and here we've got a scene where you can see a little video of me in the corner, because sometimes I quite like it to see the presenter when they're talking. You get an idea that someone's here, and then you get a screen capture, because that's what I've got set up here. So I'm going to move now to show you the OBS Studio website. You should now be seeing a copy of my Chrome that's open. This is the OBS Studio uh, Open Broadcaster Software Studio stuff. If we scroll down, you can see they offer downloads for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's free. It's used by a bunch of things because you can put together quite complicated setups and recordings and create professional products and all sorts of other things that aren't here. I'm being quite careful as I'm scrolling through because the way I did the encoding, if I do lots of quick movements, it's probably not going to show up very well in the video at the end. And that is because I've re-encoded it at a low frame rate to make it suitable for use on our network. Nice file, so small. To do the re-encoding, I used a piece of software called Handbrake, which you may have seen before. Handbrake is for Windows only. There are similar things for for Linux on the command line, FFmpeg. It does a very similar re-encoding job if, if you know the parameters and settings, but I'm just talking about the Windows software used here. Okay, so if I go back to the software, after you do the basic setup, you will get this, but it will be blank, and so we need to add things called sources and scenes, which is this section down in the bottom left corner, and I'm going to zoom in on that. So to set up a scene, you click the plus to make a new one, add or remove. There's various scenes down here. As you can guess, the title screen takes us to the title. Uh, the one was called Laptop and Cam. You now see me and I've added a nice background that I thought was roughly the same sonic colors. It's not correct, but uh, don't worry about that. There's Display and Tom, which is the one here with me in the corner. Hello. So you can see the display. That's how I normally have it set. And um, here's a zoomed in one called Scenes and Sources. This lets you just see this corner a bit more. So I had to set up this bit beforehand. In the main talk I only had the display and Tom and the, the full view of me in there because that's pretty much what you see when we do a tech talk. It's the person presenting the video or it's their screen share. So that's what you need to set up. So to set up the display and so uh, display and Tom, I'll just go into here, I am created a new scene and then I had to have a new source. If you right click in the sources or click the add button, you end up in add. So if I had to add uh, you get various options. There's input audio capture because it handles the audio sources separately. If you've got dozens of mics and all clever stuff at home, good for you. I don't. It's just on this headset. And there's another built-in one on the microphone down here. But these ones are terrible on these, so I don't use them. So it's on the headset mic for me at the moment. Hopefully the audio quality is okay for you. If I scroll down, we should be able to see levels popping up and down. Uh, if we go to add, you can add browser. So there's a browser built into it. I don't like using that. It's a bit clunky. Mostly it works, but if you want it, that's in there. Uh, the color source. So on the beginning, you see the nice color around the outside. That's just a color source. You add that. Um, everything ends up as a, an existing thing you can add and go through and stuff. But the, uh, just added a nice background color for things. Uh, images, game captures, all clever stuff if you're streaming and go on Twitch and all that sort of stuff. Maybe you use all this stuff before and you'll know way more about it than I do. I don't know. This image is just background image, image slideshow as you'd expect. Text is how I put the title onto the beginning of this video. Just put some text in so you can go over the background colour or over the top of me or whatever. VLC video source. Any of you who use VLC you know it can stream out video and apparently you can have multiple video streams coming from different things coming in. So I could have like squares of videos and live streams and webcam footage and security cam footage. Who knows what? In there. Don't need that. Uh, video capture device is something I'm using. That's what this webcam comes up as. So if we click on this option here, we will see that there's a create new option and the option of left, right laptop because I've got a thing in here. So I'll just go through making a new webcam thing because you'll probably need that. We'll call it video capture device for now, and then we get a new window up, and you go select from the devices. I've only got one device at the moment, it's the built-in laptop camera. 
click that. Deactivate configure video compressor bar. You can muck around with these settings and things. I don't think I did anything clever with it. I just created it. That's how I got a uh, laptop, which is the laptop. This camera working here. Once you've made a scene, um, because in this scene I've then got the display capture. Oh, I've got two of them. That's lovely. Get rid of that one before that breaks something. So then I needed to add the display capture to the background, so I go into here. Uh, there's a window capture, and I don't like doing the window capture because that didn't work so well for me, because that, that's a bit like in WebEx where you share your screen, but you only share one application. It tracks mostly correctly, but you can get confused. Display capture is nice, especially if you've got two screens. You could have this software running on one screen and then have your presentation on the other. And unlike me, where you're going to have layers and layers going on top of each other, um, this is nice and straightforward, apart from when you get someone popping in a notification in the corner of your video. <laughs> Turn that off, maybe. Uh, so display capture. Comes up, add new, add existing again. Whoop, move it so it's not behind me, because I can't remember which of these windows you can see. It gets confusing when you're doing exception. And you get new properties. Now this is a bit confusing, because on a display capture thing, you get a preview of the display you're getting, but again, drop down list to all the devices you've got. I've only got one display at the moment. If you had other monitors, there'd be other monitors. Capture the cursor, turn that on and off. If I turn that off, my cursor disappears for you probably right now. If not, it's fine. Cancel that. Right. Uh, these things are all in layers. Let's turn that off there. Magically it pops in there. So you can see in the bottom corner there's a layer and there's locks where you can set things in different layers. I don't think dragging it up and down. Does that change the layer? So if I turn this on, it probably won't make a difference. Yeah, so it's in layers, so it's behind. You can't see what I've turned on and off because it's in the background of the video. It's hidden by this one. And if I turn this off, you just get me. Turn this one on. Uh, so it gets confusing. It's just layers of stuff. If you've mucked around in um, Word, the same stuff. So I suggest you put together two scenes of your own. I don't know if I can import, export them or anything like that, but it's not that hard for you to do. I suggest you probably just want a scene that's you and you and what you want to show, or like this. Or you can leave yourself off completely and just have display. It's up to you. Um, you probably don't need a title, you probably don't need this unless you want to do an introduction bit or a final closing bit. That's why I had this, because it makes it a little bit more human. And uh, that's it basically for the sources and scenes. The only other section that you're interested in, in this, um, you might care about the audio levels. You can see as I'm talking here, a little dancing cursor. Usual thing in audio stuff is green is good. If I start talking a bit loud, it gets yellow, which is not so good. And if I scream, get really loud, it goes into the red. Not good. That's going to muck up the level. So it's probably busy trying to tune things on average to keep it at a reasonable level for you and not to do it noisy. The only other thing you need down here is the start stop recording. I, in my settings somewhere, settings, 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 video. Uh, you can pick the type of video output. Output, there we go. Uh, my recording format is left to MKV, which isn't so easy to view on Windows, but it does mean you can pause the recording and there's no warnings here. When you change this, um, there's various warnings because it's not the preferred video format for the studio. Start recording starts recording. The nice thing is I can pause. So if you want to do some transitions, take a moment to set up some more displays, load a web page or anything, you can pause it. I won't do that now because you won't see what happens. Well, I can try. When you unpause, you just magically pop around the screen. So it can be a bit confusing. For but it's helpful if you want to break and set things up and make sure that you're doing everything and whatever in the background. I won't click stop recording because that stops recording. You get one hit, record the video. If you've got other software to stitch together videos and stuff, great. I'm trying to do a tech talk in a tech talk. One hit, straight through. That's the settings in that. Studio mode is confusing. Cutscenes, confusing. Don't need it. Not going to do it now. So at the end of doing all this, uh, when you finally get to the end of your tech talk recording and hit stop recording, you get a video output settings control is. After that, I then need to use another bit of software called Handbrake, like this, um, to re-encode that video for two reasons. One, I wanted to make it in a format that Windows can cope with easily, um, which is MP4, basically. Loads of stuff's got support for that. And another is I wanted to drop the frame rate right down, because when I'm typing into a terminal or showing you static text, you don't need 30 FPS or 60 FPS frames per second, that is. It makes a huge difference to the size of the file, and nothing's happening on the screen, so there's no reason we have to get above 10 FPS. You can see me talking here, and it's probably not that juddery, and this video will be in 10 FPS by the time I upload it. 
when you download and install Handbrake, and I'll go to the Handbrake Studio thing for a sec here. Again, just download it. There's more information on how to set all this up. Uh, all I needed to do for Handbrake was set it up. I loaded the pre-built-in stuff. There's a 72030P in here, Vimeo, YouTube, super thing for broadcasting online. And if I'm putting this on Confluence, it's going online. So it needs to be similar settings. I use this as the basic setting and then I had to make sure that that was an MP4, which I think it is anyway. Dimensions I didn't touch. Filters I didn't touch. In video, I changed this frame rate to 10 or 12. Makes it nice and slow. Uh, peak or constant, I don't think that matters too much. I think I slid this. If you hover over the text, you get some help. Um, basically, the lower the number, the worse quality of the video, but the smaller the file size. So I slid this down to 20 that way because that's the lower end of standard definition video. Oop. And I set the encoder level to slow because it will take a very, well, very slow, take a very long time for it to encode it, but it usually makes a better quality video and smaller video. And I check the audio and make sure the bit rate was dropped to 128 because you're only listening to my voice. I am not a piece of classical music. You just need to be able to hear me clearly. Subtitles there are none, chapters there are none, you can set that up if you want to do something careful. And then I saved a new preset just so I wouldn't have to do this every time. So I did my preset uh, uh, description. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, you can add it to categories if you want to make loads of categories. They pop up in that menu. The dimensions, custom, why well, I left that because it's something there. What you do have to do seemingly is in the audio, make sure you set this rate to whatever level you want in here and you can choose whether you want stereo or mono it doesn't make a massive difference to sound if you don't do that this seems to override the settings that come up later on which is not good same with the dimensions they override whatever settings you've got before it will import the dimensions correctly it seems so this 1080 by 720 is probably bigger than the screen you'll actually view it on you could make it smaller but this works well enough for me should get 15 minutes of video so then you need to pick a file that you're going to encode so it gets a bit odd um, here so if you do open source drag or drop a file here so I one day I'll go into my file menu and pick a video and I'll grab the one I did earlier uh, which is in fact I could do a nice short one drum routine oh no I'll do the one I did earlier because it'll get confusing so this is the full rate file and you can see in the bottom corner or maybe not it was recorded and it was about 140 megabytes in total for a 14 minute video there is a 100 megabyte limit on the confluence page and it doesn't need to be that size anyway so now I've dropped this in it's loaded it and you can see there's a preview of the video down in this corner you can jump through different sections of it to make sure it is the file you want things then you need to do a save as um, example and I suggest you save it as MP4 because that's the container format that Windows has a lot of support for. The other format, if you've got VLC, you can set it up, but that's the one that normally works. Um, Web optimized is important, but it's already set for us because that means it's easy for people to just skip through and you won't have to download the whole file and all that stuff. So now it, all the settings should be saved from before. And I will load up my custom preset of. <coughs> what did I make, Tom? Well, this is the one I made before, so this is saved. So I just need to load that each time and won't have to change the settings. And then you click Start Encode. If you've got a load of videos to do, you can queue, which is what I just did, and you can change the source or you can change the options. And so we can output multiple ones and then queue again. Well, I was going to say it's the same job. But then you can see there is a queue in here, and you've got the ones from earlier in the day where this is the last one we just added. So it says this hasn't been done yet, and you can delete things off the queue, copy them off the queue, whatever else. And then either you start the queue or start the job. And when you start the queue, it's going to sit there and it's going to encode. It will take it a while to do the encoding. It's probably not actually going to take it an hour. There we go. It's caught up. It's about 10 minutes. Use it, on those settings, it takes about the same length as it would to record the file. But that's it. At the end of it, you'll get a file out of it. And I've done this one earlier, so I'll show you the one I made earlier. That is this one at 1080p. Instead of being 140 megabytes and some change, this one's 75 megabytes, which is fine that's well under the 100 megabyte limit and the quality of the other video and the, this one which i'm about to record seemed reasonable for a tech talk so that's it thank you for watching and um that's so if you want to make your own video that's roughly how i did it and how to set it up good luck